Hi guys, Don and I had quite a few questions concerning Witch Hazel and the last video that I did, I didn't answer questions that most people were asking. So we're going to redo the whole video on how to find, identify, and make your own commercial grade distilled Witch Hazel in the kitchen. The Witch Hazel seed pod. It's light brown when it's fresh, and it's a very, very, very cool shrub. It's an understory shrub native to Michigan, all up and down the eastern United States. And it'll have tiny little popcorn-shaped brown seeds. And they're oval dart-shaped seeds. And what's cool is this pod opens and explodes the seeds out into the woods. It's really neat. Also, this shrub uh, blooms in the winter months, and so it makes it relatively easy to identify while it's in bloom. And this particular shrub is a good example of how it's geometric and twisted and shaped. Now, we're standing in a woods that's been taken over by honeysuckle, which is an invasive species that you really don't want on your property it will eventually destroy this old shrub. Normally these old shrubs have suckers all the way around them. And you can see that this one doesn't have suckers anymore. Now I've never particularly harvested from this particular area, but Dawn and I did come out on this beautiful sleeting December day to give a demonstration of how to identify it, which the seed pods and right here if I can find a way to get these flowers down above us is a bunch of hickory trees and what we see as far as these leaves are just the shattered <coughs> hickory leaves but here is a beautiful example of a winter bloom of the witch hazel Now this can be harvested and utilized at any particular time of the year. I prefer while it's blooming. And the reason I prefer that is generally in the cold winter months and all the insects are down. So after the killing frost, I'll harvest the suckers around the shrub and it gives the tree time to heal before the summer months come. Also, a lot of the astringent that we're after is present in the bark of the suckers. So the suckers are what we're harvesting. And so you're gonna look for a shrub that has a lot of suckers around it. And in order to make enough witch hazel for you to use, if you use what we use, which is about a quart every two years, you'll need 15 to 20 four foot tall suckers, which we're gonna harvest. And then we'll see you in the kitchen and show you how to peel the bark and how to get started. I want to point out that earlier in the video I said we were going to make a quart of pure distilled witch hazel, but my recipe right here is for a pint, and I can't imagine anyone using more than a pint of witch hazel in a period of year. Don and I usually use it over a period of two years, one full pint. So we're going to make a pint, and in order to make a pint, you'll need two full quarts of peeled bark. These little Mora knives are cute. They have a case that they don't fall out of. And we just put it on a necklace and it's kind of one of our favorite little foraging knives. The pruners are nice for when you're harvesting because when you cut the sucker, and this is about as big as we're ever gonna cut, which is a little bit smaller than a nickel. 
And then this can be used for kindling. It can be used for hobby craft if you're a Harry Potter fan, which Hazel makes a really good wand. <laughs> Uh, I like these because it makes the very twiggy and geometric witch hazel manageable. We cut it down into small pieces so that we can get it in the house. It makes it pretty nice. Now when you're whittling this, you're taking the X cambium and well into the cambium layer. And you'll kind of tell when you've got down to where there's no real fluid In the stick that you're trying to extract and the twigs the smaller twigs I don't bother to whittle I cut them off into three to six inch pieces and include them in the bark then once they get to about half the diameter of a pencil that's when I will skin them off I almost have enough to get this process started so I will see you in the kitchen and show you the next stage once we get the amount of bark we need. The next stage after you shave your bark, or at least the way I was taught, was you let that bark air dry on a towel or the newspapers or wherever for about a day. And the best I can tell, the only real reason for that is somehow it takes this super acidic astringic odor and curbs it a little bit so that when you're preparing it in the house it isn't so bad on your sinuses <laughs> however if you like the smell of witch hazel and i happen to i love the smell of it i love it when it fills the house then it really doesn't matter and then the other question that i got asked from the video was why the vodka i was never told why I put a cup of vodka in this mixture, but common sense would make me assume that the vodka is going to evaporate and it's there to somehow break down the turpitoids and allow this astringent to come out in the simmering process and become distilled. I've done it both ways, I've done it with and without the vodka and I can't really tell the difference, but because I was taught that, I'm going to continue to put a cup of vodka in this. So what we do is we take two quarts of condensed bark and we place it in a big pan. The reason I use a big pan is because I want to keep the water level and the bark level low enough that I can put something in the base of this and allow the water to be naturally distilled. I add the bark, two quarts, which we'll list all of this on a plate or a recipe plate on the back of the video. Two quarts of bark and a quart and a half to two quarts of water and then I bring it to a simmer and once it's brought to a simmer I pull the lid off and I let it cool and you can put a rock in the bottom I personally like this little steamer tray that came with a steamer slash canning outfit that we purchased and I put it in the bottom and you want it to be above the water level once you put that there, then you take whatever container you're going to capture your witch hazel in. In this particular instance, I'm going to use a stainless steel bowl. You put it in the center. And the most important part is to have this concave lid. You want a lid that's concave. And you flip it upside down. So as it's simmering all that condensation is going to collect on this and it's going to run down and drip into the center that way you don't have any of the tannins that would color or stain your astringent so this should take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half i'm going to go ahead and put it on low i don't want to boil this i just want it to simmer so i will show you the end result I've had everything shut down for about 30 minutes. Something that you do want to be careful of when you're doing this is keep in mind that um, all the condensation will collect on this and then drop down into the bowl. You don't want to keep it on too long, so watch it because you can end up evaporating everything that you have on the bottom and burning the bark. You don't ever want to do that 
because it'll definitely smell. But this is what we have from everything that I did. This is a pint and a half jar. So I got just under a pint. Nice, beautiful, clear, distilled witch hazel. Has the house smelling wonderful. Uh, one thing I do want to add is that if you watch in your area a place that's going to be developed, uh, see if you can get permission to go out there and harvest any of the plants or shrubs or anything that's going to be otherwise destroyed. We try to do that around here and more times than not they give us permission to do it. So safe and happy foraging. If you have any questions just type it in.